Hey, Scoob, dig this guy's crazy hairdo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 crossovers that made our childhood. Well, Eliza, <laughs> as dog is my witness, I'll never lose my babies again! <laughs> for this list, we'll be looking at the most exciting times characters from different media met and blew our young minds. If you had a crossover that hit you right in the feels growing up, let us know in the comments below. Number 10, Phineas and Ferb, Mission Marvel, Phineas and Ferb, and Marvel Franchise. The sheer hilarity of Phineas and Ferb, combined with the fact that Disney owns a staggering number of intellectual properties, means that this beloved cartoon is prime for some fun crossovers. I am Red Skull. Yes! Yes, you are. You know, you really should use sunblock. You're burned down to the bone. The show once inserted the brothers into the plot of Star Wars, where they followed their own story as the events of A New Hope played out. Oh, wow. Can you sense that with the Force? No, I can see them. They're right over there. Still, what could top the time they met Earth's mightiest heroes? Kids who grew up loving both superheroes and Phineas and Ferb got to see the likes of Spider-Man, Iron Man, Thor, and the Hulk team up with the kids to fight evil. Perhaps even more fun was Dr. Doofenshmirtz teaming up with the Marvel villains. When we're out together, wreaking havoc, the fun just never ends. Number 9, Hercules and the Arabian Night, Hercules and Aladdin. Those who grew up during the 90s had the fortune of living through one of the greatest periods of animation of all time, commonly known as the Disney Renaissance. This is impossible! You, you, you can't be alive! You'd have to be a... a god? Both 90s classics Aladdin and Hercules even got TV spin-offs. I promised the Sultan I'd keep the prince happy. Despite the shows not being on at the same time, they shared a setting and a mythologically inspired past. Thanks to some meddling from Jafar and Hades, Aladdin and Herc battled each other at first, but eventually realized the ruse and teamed up. The episode's finale also saw that pair playing off each other's strengths to defeat the dastardly duo of Disney villains. I'll take that. Herc, care to do the honors? Gladly! Number 8, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Supergirl, Batwoman, The Flash, Arrow, and Legends of Tomorrow. Starting with Arrow, the CW saw a number of shows based on iconic DC characters. Much like the comics that inspired them, crossover events between shows were commonplace. With the multiverse, every existence multiplied by possibility. Those annual crossovers grew in scope until the most ambitious of them all, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Heroes fought to protect the destruction of all realities with an event that crossed five separate series, featured dozens of heroes, and took place across two calendar years. Even in the darkest times, hope cuts through. While those that grew up with the Arrowverse were the prime audience for the audacious collaboration, the inner child of almost every generation was awoken with the event. Supergirl. John. I know you must be confused. I was too, but it happened. Cameos included Burt Ward's Robin, as well as characters from the likes of Smallville, the 90s Flash, Lucifer, and even the often forgotten Birds of Prey. Number 7. That's So Sweet Life of Hannah Montana. That's So Raven, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, and Hannah Montana. The brilliant thing about this crossover is that each episode served as its own individual story, but also functioned perfectly as one part of the whole. The episodes were at one point bundled together as a TV movie too. All three episodes feature the Tipton Inn from Sweet Life. Woo! Swanky! <laughs> oh, thank you! We take pride in our swank. Raven arrives first, under a pseudonym of course, and eventually gets into mayhem with the twins. Later, THE Hannah Montana checks in, and yet more chaos ensues. We have to say though, Hannah Montana befriending Maddie Fitzpatrick is a duo strong enough to rival the force of Zack and Cody themselves. Hold these phone books. <laughs> I just want to say goodbye and thanks for the tickets. Your concert was awesome. Thanks. Now bounce up and down. Number 6. Rugrats Go Wild 
Rugrats, and the Wild Thornberries. After dominating the small screen for decades, a number of Nicktoon characters got theatrical adaptations. Hello, Mumsy. Having a jolly holiday. In fact, the third Rugrats film and second Wild Thornberries film were actually one in the same. You're never gonna have real adventures. You're just a backyard baby with a dapper full of dreams. It revealed that Tommy, like so many of the show's viewers, was a Nigel Thornberry fan, and by chance, both ended up on the same island. As was so often the case with the Rugrats gang, they found themselves lost. This gave a number of the two shows' different characters a chance to meet, perhaps most notably Eliza and Spike the dog. You know, it's funny, it's, uh, for a minute there I thought I actually heard you talking to me. Eliza's ability to speak to animals gave Rugrats fans their first opportunity to hear from the beloved pet who was voiced by Bruce Willis. Number 5. The TGIF Time Warp Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Boy Meets World, You Wish, and Teen Angel. There are few programming blocks as iconic or legendary as ABC's TGIF lineup of the 90s. How much did you hear? I heard you talking to Satan. Sabrina the Teenage Witch and Boy Meets World were stalwarts, and Sabrina at one point even had a cameo after Cory and company met a group of witches. Soon after, there was a much more ambitious crossover. Time travel antics began on Sabrina when Salem swallowed a time ball and jumped across different shows, sending each to a different decade. What's going on? How'd I get back in the 60s? Where's my time ball? After Sabrina ended up in the 60s, Boy Meets World was thrown back to the 40s with Cory preparing to leave for war. Next up, the genie show You Wish traveled to the 1950s, and the saga wrapped up in the 70s on Teen Angel. I wish life could be like the 70s again. Ooh, that is a bad thing to say when you're holding a magical time-traveling cat. <laughs> Number 4. The Jetsons Meet the Flintstones The Jetsons and the Flintstones Going all the way back to the late 50s, the Hanna-Barbera company at the time had a stable of the most popular cartoon characters ever assembled. Meet George Jetson! <laughs> Perhaps most famous were a pair of cartoon sitcom families living in distinct time periods, the Flintstones and the Jetsons. Each helped define the childhoods of a certain generation. When a crossover film was eventually produced years later, through some time travel antics, the Jetsons were sent back to the Stone Age. Once there, they quickly befriended the Flintstones and the Rubbles. It's very comfy, made of genuine shale. Uh... I kind of thought so. The technological gap was, luckily, hardly a hurdle in their fast friendship. Guess you're back in the fast lane again, George. Thanks to you and your car, Fred. Well, the thanks we were looking for was your help in getting us back to the dirt lane. Number 3. The Jimmy Timmy Power Hour The Fairly Odd Parents and the Adventures of Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius at first glance, the worlds of Jimmy Neutron and Timmy Turner may not have seemed entirely compatible. After all, one was traditionally animated and focused on magic, while the other was computer animated and featured a character who solved problems with science. Don't be like that, Goddard! It's just a simple tune-up! Our young minds were blown, however, when a trio of crossover specials proved them to be the perfect pairing. The unique themes of being an only child of 10 or 11 was shared in both shows and gave them common ground when they met up. The two even ended up sharing an interest in Cindy. May I help you? Is Cindy home? Plus, we got a swap in art styles too, which we still can't decide is creepy or cool. Hey Wanda, stand over there and I'll take your picture! Number 2. Bravo Dooby Doo, Scooby Doo Franchise, and Johnny Bravo. This episode inserted Johnny into the familiar format of a Scooby-Doo adventure where he met the gang after being picked up by the mystery machine. Hi there. My car just broke down and I was wondering if you guys could give me a lift. In typical Johnny Bravo fashion, he hung a lampshade on many of the tropes that appeared in nearly every Scooby-Doo episode. Johnny pointed out things like the laugh track and the fact that no one seemed to find it odd that the dog talks. 
Other highlights included a zany chase sequence, Velma and Johnny both losing their glasses, Fred and Daphne getting some alone time, and a ghost revealed to be a person in the mask. Joe Barbera? Who's that? Alright, alright, enough with the silly masks! It wouldn't be the last time the Scooby gang would cross over, however, as they even eventually met the Winchester boys in an episode of Supernatural. So we're stuck in a cartoon with a talking dog. Not just any talking dog, THE talking dog. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Ghost Story, Rugrats, and Ah! Real Monsters. The Rugrats tell scary stories with some real monsters in them. Get em, monsters! <laughs> Eddie Munster, Foster's home for imaginary friends, and Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Ed, Ed, and Eddie briefly cross paths with the imaginary friends. He mustn't be disturbed from his slumber. He becomes quite vicious when alarmed. I'm counting on it. I'm telling mom! Who? I'm Wild Wild West, Cousin Skeeter, and Keenan and Kel. Skeeter meets up with Keenan and Kel on a western vacation. Skeeter, I think there's somebody else in your bed. Nah, not just somebody. My name's Skeeter. I come from Manhattan. My skills are fat and I'm smoother than satin. Big Time Beach Party, Big Time Rush, and SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob's friend, Patchy the Pirate, looks for gold with the band. Yeah, real pirates! <laughs> not just any pirate, Patchy the Pirate. Rufus, Lilo and Stitch the series, and Kim Possible. Everyone's favorite naked mole rat meets everyone's favorite Hawaiian alien. K K Kim pa pa Possible! Oh no, you don't. I'm sorry. I get a little excited around, uh, you know, the remarkable. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Forever Red Power Rangers Franchise each team of the Power Rangers had their own unique powers and style, but one constant was the leader in red. Who is that? <laughs> That's Tommy, the Red Zeal Power Ranger. <laughs> He's a legend. So, for its 10-year anniversary, the show pulled off something truly special. Reviving an iconic enemy from its early days, a special episode of Wild Force saw every leader Red Ranger from the show's history, including fan favorites Tommy and Jason, brought together to form a super team to defeat the Machine Empire. We have to stop them here, on the moon. We're the only chance Earth has. The episode was iconic for children of the time, as well as fans from seasons past. By filling the episode with references and killer action, it proved to be one of the best Power Ranger episodes ever. Wow, so that was Tommy. He really is the greatest ranger. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.